Okay, and we're live. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on aging and life course approach. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Ashwa Azim. I'm the SCOF director for this term. Um, and I'm very happy to be inviting you to this webinar. Um, just to start off, I'm going to ask all the speakers to introduce themselves, and then I'm just going to go and do a little bit overview of the webinar before we go into details. Alex, do you want to go first? OK. Um, hello. Uh, my name is Alex, and I'm the SCOF Regional Assistant for the Asia Pacific region. And uh, we choose to talk about aging because aging is voted by the, all the MPOs in Asia Pacific regions to be the regional priority of this year. So uh, that's why we choose to focus on aging and develop this webinar. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Vicky. Hi everyone, I'm Vicky and I'm a little facilitator for this webinar and I'll be here to share a little activity with you guys. Perfect, yeah. thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with all of you um, and I'm going to start with the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so um, welcome to the webinar on aging and introduction on aging. And um, so basically the idea of this webinar and why we're having this webinar is because of two reasons. The first thing that Alex just mentioned, um, that aging is was voted as a regional priority for Asia Pacific this year. And last year when I was um, the RA for Asia Pacific, it was also a priority then. Um, but aging is not only... Um, a regional priority for, I mean, it is a regional priority for Asia Pacific, but it's not only an, a public health issue, which is in Asia Pacific alone, um, because it is increasingly um, an issue in Europe and even um, in other countries um, and in other continents, such as the Americas, the Africas. Um, so starting with this, this was the idea of why we're having it. And then the second reason why we're having this webinar is because we are about to release our manual on aging which i'll just talk to you about at the end of this webinar um so we just want to use this as the first webinar um on our series on aging um to give you a little bit about um what it is and how we work on it on how you can work on it um so this is um just a little bit overview of the agenda um and firstly we're going to talk about the status quo and aging um as a public health issue so what are the current statistics that we see um, and the trends that we see in aging then we have components of aging. Um, what are the different aspects of aging, the social aspect, the financial aspect, um, the human rights aspect. Um, then we have a little bit about history of aging um, and about the United Nations, the WHO, um, of how, the, fir of how um, the first declaration which incorporated older people um, and issued them rights. So the significance of aging um, in history. Next, we're going to talk about healthy aging and life course approach um, and what active aging is and why life course approach is the most effective. And lastly, um, I'm going to give a little bit introduction to the manual and some activities on aging. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Wiki and I'm going okay. to present some answers. Mm -hmm. Yes, so before we start, uh, we did have a little activity for everyone, but due to time restraints, it's hard for you guys to really participate in this activity, but I'd like to share it with everyone. So basically, in our APR uh, meeting, we did this in our SCOF session. We had this activity in which we asked every participant to think of four major life events that happened or have not happened yet and they believe might happen in their future. And they have to list this four major li life events in a chronological order and put it in certain ranges of like ages. So for example, you could probably put like uh, starting to walk, starting to talk or getting married, having your first kid, these kind of four major life events. And so right now we have a little example, which everyone can see, that probably someone put their first major life event as kissing a guy, which would probably land around like 10 to 20 years old. And, and there's also different ones such as getting married, finding their first job, or retirement. So then we can scroll down and see at the end, the fourth major life event probably is like uh, having kids, probably it's parents passing away and these usually land around 40 to 50 or 40 to 50 uh 50 to 60 or 60 to 70 like at the very 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 end it probably lands around 
around 60 to 70. But as we notice, um, as the life expectancy increases, especially, especially um, for, as the life expectancy increases towards 70, as the average of WHO is around 72 years old. And for like Taiwan, where I come from, female life expectancy can be as long as 80 years old. We would realize that most of these major life events don't land at the end years of, of human life. So then there would be like 10 to 20 years in which a person has no major life events in their elderly age. So this is something we could think about, like why won't we have any major life events when we're getting older? Because being able to live older is actually a very good chance for you to explore and to uh, go against the normal uh, beliefs, yeah. So this was what the activity was about. And I'll pass it on to Alex. Okay, so uh, what Vicky just mentioned is an activity we did uh, back in Taiwan for several times and uh, we did it in the APRM in Korea and uh, it was uh, well received. So uh, that's why we show the, like the raw outcome and like the idea behind the activity to you. And next, I would like to talk about uh, the reasons why we should focus on or care about the uh, issue of uh, aging. So if we look at the next picture, it will show the life expectancy at birth. Uh, this is done by the show and it shows uh, the expected life expectancy at birth from 1950s to uh, 2100. And you can see that uh, on average, the world, which is the presented by the blue lines, it is um, growing. It, it shows a growing trend. And if you look at the green lines, which, mean, uh, which uh, represent more developed regions, it is also showing growing, uh, show a, a growing trend. But if you focus on like the less developed region and the least developed countries, they actually also show a growing trend. And you can, if you calculate the uh, slope or the speed of the growing of that life expectancy at birth, you can see that uh, the less developed regions and the least developed countries uh, has higher slope, which means they have uh, they are aging faster than the more developed regions. So, uh, and the next slide, I read that uh, we should learn about aging because uh, aging is an ongoing process. Either you're living, uh, li uh, living in a uh, developed country or a less developed country. And another reason we should care about aging is uh, people around the world are growing rapidly. In the last uh, picture, we show that people are growing, but in this picture, we show that uh, the projected uh, percents of people aged 60 or older in, in the year 2025 uh, is shown here. So uh, we can see that countries like Japan or Germany, Italy, Spain uh, are they, they will have more than 30% of their uh, citizens aged over 60. And most of the countries in the world will have their people aged over uh, 60 uh, from 10 to 30%. And this, in this part, in this percentage, uh, we will see the countries including uh, China, uh, India, and Brazil, which has like the most uh, people in the world right now. So, uh, and yes, so in the ne next slide, we can see that uh, divided into different regions. And in the like 40 or 50 year, uh, many people, many uh, regions are going to age really fast. And let's take Europe, for example. So in 2006, Europe has uh, one fifth of their, re uh, of their citizens uh, aging over 60. but in 2050, they will have more than one third of their uh, citizens over aging over 60. Uh, yes, 60 years old. And if you look at Asia, which uh, composed of the most uh, people 
population in the world, you can see that it's the speed of aging is really fast. So from 9% to 24%, almost uh, a quarter of their of Asian in 2050 will age uh, 60 or over. So uh, we should learn about aging because uh, aging is, um, next slide, sorry. Uh, because uh, aging is happening everywhere, e either in um, Europe or in Asia, it's happening everywhere. So if we go into next slide, we can uh, look more detail into each country. So let's look at Japan first. Japan is a country uh, with uh, famous for its um, really old age people. So they have many people aged over 100 and and more many more and more people are uh, aging and becoming uh, like over 80 or over 100 in Japan. So, um, but we can also see that uh, like China, which we consider maybe it's still a developed country, but in the year 2050, it will have more than a quarter of Chinese people aged over 60. And this trend also happens in India, uh, which will have um, more than 10% to 15% of their citizens aged over 60 uh, by the year 2050. So, uh, oh, so, and we can also observe another thing. It's, uh, it's what I kind of mentioned before. It's the speed of uh, the people are age, a speed the a country is aging. So if we look at Sweden, it's in the middle. So um, Sweden has 10% of their citizen uh, aged over 60 in 1950, and they will have 25% of their citizen aged over 60 in the year 2050. Oh, sorry, uh, 1950 to 2050. But if you look at China, they only have 5% of their uh, uh, people aged over 60 in 1950, but they will have more than a quarter of the people uh, aged over 60, 25% uh, in 2050. So if we go to next slide, we can see that um, we should care, learn about aging because aging is not only happening everywhere, it's also happening very fast, especially for develop, developing countries because of the advance, advancement of medicine or uh, social welfare or uh, like the people are getting richer richer so they can take care take better care of themselves and we'll look at the case of taiwan which is where vicky and i come from taiwan is a country that uh, is also aging really fast so if we look at the next slide which is uh, this in chinese but i'll try to explain it so this is in uh, the year 2016 and uh, uh, we have uh, maybe not a lot of people fall into the group of age, aged over uh, 65 but um, if in the following slide you can see the speed really uh, will increase really fast and what I want to show you in this picture is um, the the is the dependency ratio so if you look at the dependency ratio, you should look at the uh, picture on the left, a bit, um, on the left corner. So the black people, a uh, black one. So you can see that um, on the uh, if you look at the black one, there are five point six uh, young people that need to take care of one uh, older people, and uh, when we try to uh, when we calculate dependency ratio, we of course don't you don't only calculate older people because we also have to take a uh, calculate the uh, younger people who cannot take it up of themselves. So if we look at the next slides, you can uh, just go through it really fast. And so there will be 2021 and 2026 and 2031. So if you, if we stop at 2036, we can see that uh, it's um, really uh, obvious that uh, 
if you look at the right, the average Taiwanese people are aging faster. And if you look at the dependency ratio, now in 2036, which is 20 years, less than 20 years from now, 2.2 of 2.2 2 Taiwanese um, young people has to take care of uh, one older people compared to 20 uh, from now, it's a uh, 5.5 to 1. And if we go on to uh, 2041, 2046, 2051, 2056, and 2061. So 2061 is um, like 40 to 50 years from now. And you can see most of the Taiwanese people uh, fall into the uh, the 15 to 60 years old and the, uh, those who are over 65 years old. And if you look at the dependency ratio, you can see now 1.3 of uh, 1.3 uh, young people has to take care of one uh, older people. So it's basically uh, like me when I'm in, if I'm a young person in 2061 in Taiwan, I have to take care of uh, one older person compared to now, which uh, this work is shared by 5.5 younger people. So yeah, so if we go to the next slide, uh, I, I, I kind of gave, gave the answer earlier. So I want you to, to see at the dependency ratio. So uh, yeah, so it's, you can see the dependency ratio is getting higher and higher. So it means that uh, we have less, less young people to take care of uh, older people. Or we can see that uh, more old people is, are, more people are getting old. So the dependency ratio is getting higher. Okay, so uh, this is a quote I really like. It's, uh, yesterday's child is today's adult and tomorrow's grandmother or grandfather. So uh, if you're listening to this, I suppose you're a medical, medical student aged between 20 to 30 or even uh, below 20. But uh, in 40, 50, or 60 years old, you will also become uh, people aged over 60 and you might become someone's grandmother or grandfather by that. So uh, the next slide is, we should learn about aging because uh, aging is our future. And uh, are we prepared for this future? Yes, next slide. Okay, so yes. So the first thing I want to talk about is aging. So uh, I mentioned aging, aging is, uh, it's a noun, and the aging, the definition is quite simple. If you look at the next slide, uh, you can uh, define aging by the process, process of being older. And uh, in APR, we, we let the participant to, um, to share what they think composed of aging. But since this is not interactive, I'll just show you what uh, composed of aging. So aging is a complex process that is uh, composed of biological um, components, which like cellular damage, and physiological components like organ function failure, and psychological, like um, a social, a social uh, I, this, this, um, this is wrong, but that's okay. So social, like family, a career, and psychological, uh, which is number three. <laughs> okay, can you press the ne next button? So uh, what I'm trying to show here is um, aging is a complex process. And uh, yes, so we can go on to the next slide. So uh, I will not talk about this for now, but it will show up later. So uh, next slide. So um, some definition on what is being an uh, aged person. So according to WHO, people aged over 60 in developed countries or over 65 in developed country. Um, is developed is defined as aged, uh, a, 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 an aged person, and if we uh, divide the global population by people over sixty in developed country or six, over sixty five in developed country, we can see that in two thousand and six there are eleven percent, but by the time two thousand fifty there will be over, there will be almost a quarter of people. Who are age who who are uh, defined as aged uh, in the current definition? So, 
um, I'll introduce you to uh, what UN, which is stand for United Nations, uh, had the actions on aging. So I'll introduce you to four actions led by UN, uh, which spans from 1948 to 2002. So the first one is uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So uh, initially, they, the UN didn't focus solely on aging, but they, they, they talk about the importance of elderly rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Yes, you can see pictures here. Yes, and they, uh, as I mentioned, they didn't talk about aging, but they, they start to acknowledge the rights of the elderly rights. Uh, it's part of the human rights, yes. So it reads that everyone has the right to stand for a living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family, including food, closing, housing, blah, 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 blah. And you can see the fifth, fifth line. It says that, um, and the right to security in the event of employment, sickness, disability, widowhood, old age, or a other lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond his control. So in this declaration, uh, they actually consider old age uh, is like a factor that might um, uh, worsen your life and my or my hurts your human rights. So that's why they write it in the declaration to uh, state that uh, e even you are old age, you still have uh, human rights to this stuff. And if we look on next slide, we can see that uh, they started to focus uh, more on the topic of aging in 1988 and 1982. So the aim of the Vienna International Plan of Act action on aging is to strengthen the capacity of countries to deal with the aging of their populations and promote an appropriate international response to the issues of aging. And if we look at the next slides, uh, we can see that they list out uh, 14 principles to uh, in the topic of aging. And uh, I don't know if, I think this will be recorded, so I won't uh, read every line, but you can see the line after uh, this webinar ended. And if we go into the next slide, which is I think is more important, is uh, the Vienna International Plan uh, recommend some actions, concrete actions for uh, countries to focus on, like recommendation, uh, like uh, health and nutrition for age, uh, aged person, or like housing and environment, social welfare, or education. And uh, they also acknowledge that the role of combating aging should not only be on the government, but also on the international and regional collaboration and other NGOs or other um, stakeholders. Okay, and we, if we look at the ninth slide, we can see that in 1991, there is a principle for older person set up. And they list five principles that they think is really important when we are dealing with the issue of aging, which is independence, participation, care, self-fulfillment, and dignity. Yes, so uh, this is a nice picture, nice picture I want to show you. And the next slide we will see in 22, 2002, we will see, uh, the Madrid International Plan of Action on Aging is set up. And because uh, by the time, by this time, uh, the MDG, which is the Millennial Development Goals, are set up. So um, the UN starts to look at aging not just as uh, like a health problem, but they try to uh, implement the aging and the issues around aging into all the sectors. So uh, different parts of aging, for example, the social part of aging or the health part of aging or the um, economical part of aging can be considered uh, in, the uh, in the government's policies. So the aim of this plan is to change at all levels and all sectors, sectors so that the enormous potential of aging in the 21st century may be fulfilled. 
and also people everywhere are able to age with security and dignity. And they, in the next slide, and they also point out three directions. And next slide. Uh, and I choose to focus on direction two because I think it's more related to uh, medical students. So they reached that advancing health and well-being into OH is direction two. And they include like um, health promotion and universal health care and uh, older people with HIV and AIDS and care providers and uh, like mental health and people, older people with disabilities. Okay, so I also uh, put direction three here. So uh, if we, I talk about four um, actions led by UN. So uh, you can, I, I try to give you like a brief history of what UN has done in the topic of aging. Okay, so next um, I'll talk about a life course approach. So the life course approach, the idea of life course approach, uh, according to WHO, is to uh, aim at increasing the effectiveness of interventions. Uh, yes, you can go into the next slide. Yes, thank you. So uh, the, the, the 10 point slides, yeah. So um, the life course approach aim, aims at increasing the effectiveness of intervention throughout a person's life. So it means that it focuses not just on the uh, aging, the people who are over 60 or 65, but they fo focus on the, a person's whole life from their uh, birth till their death. And in, I, let me see in which year. Okay, in recent years, uh, WHO also, also set up a 10 midterm progress indicators. That is, uh, uh, can you press uh, another button to show the title? The next one. Okay, that's, that's okay, I'll just read it. So, uh, yes, this one. So, oh, that's right, yeah. So, uh, this 10 points is written in the Global Star Strategy and Action Plan on Aging. No, the, the 10, 10, one, the 10 points. Yeah, can you go back? <laughs> yes, yeah, this one, okay, stay here. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so um, this is rather new for me, but I'll try to explain it. So um, they straight up, they set up this, oh, oh, I, I because it will automatically move to the next slide. So we might have to move it back, that's yeah, sorry. So this 10 points includes like, um, they want to increase number of countries uh, dealing with aging specifically in their policies. And they want to increase uh, numbers of countries with national plans, policy or strategies on aging and health. And they want to increase the uh, national multi-stakeholder in uh, countries. And they also want to set up a legislation in countries for uh, against age-based discrimination. And um, yes, so basically this 10 points under the global strategy and action plan on aging in the house, it's what WHO wants its member country to do. Uh, uh, and it has a focus on a policy making uh, to combat the, all the negative parts of aging, uh, uh, discrimination on aging and what disabilities aged people might face. Yes, and I'll share the link uh, after this webinar uh, up on this global strategy and action plan. And if we go to the next slide, which is the slide that shows two slopes, uh, two, two lines. Yes, so um, I, Personally, I consider this this slides to be the most important slides uh, for our listeners because it contains really a lot of information. Although it looks kind of easy, so um, the x axis, which is the horizontal axis, is the age, and the I think it's horizontal, and the vertical axis is the functional capacity. Functional capacity is means that uh, ability of a person to function 
and to function, uh, a person, uh, for example, can take care of the, take care of themselves, can attend schools, can work, can make money for themselves, or even can take care of others. So, if we look at the upper, the the upper line, so we can see that um, in the early life stage, um, most people cannot take care of themselves. So they have to grow to a certain age to pass the disability threshold to be able to function. So, and as we age into adult life, which uh, we are able to maintain highest possible level of function, uh, we are able to take care of a younger person and also, also older person, and we can contribute to our society and take care of ourselves. And uh, suppose the, uh, everyone should be above disability threshold in the uh, adult life period. But in the last part, which is the older age before death, is you also, it becomes like early life when you also uh, need people to take care of you. So you need to maintain independence and pre prevent disability in your older age. And what I want you to look at is the range of function in the individual. So when you compare the upper line and the lower line, you can see that um, this basically uh, affects the time, how early you are, you enter disability, you fall lower to disability threshold, meaning uh, how early are you unable to take care of yourselves? And the range of functional and in individual are affects by a lot of things. Most people will only tend to look at um, individual and the individual. So they will look at like, because for example, this person uh, is, uh, uh, he has a lot of uh, bad lifestyle. For example, he smokes a lot or he doesn't exercise or he has accident in uh, his early life. So as a result, he will uh, go lower uh, to the dis disability threshold faster than other people. Uh, this is not a, a wrong statement, but when we look at the uh, when we look as a whole, we should also focus on other aspect of this. For example, um, if you're a healthy person, and but however you uh, you you lead a like a healthy lifestyle, and you don't like for example you don't smoke, you don't drink, and you exercise regularly. But if you live in the less stable society, for example, a country that is ridden by war or ridden by um, like uh, infectious diseases or countries that suffers from uh, climate change or suffers from a uh, lack of uh, vaccines or nutrition or a countries that lacks the facilities for an uh, aged, aged person. Like for example, the uh, age friendly like uh, elevators or like the things the the things you hold when you walk up the stairs i i don't know the name but i know you i know i'm sure you know what i'm talking about and like all the facilities on the road for example like the uh traffic lights so if you uh you're a healthy person sorry the last slide so you um if even you're a healthy person but if you live in these uh, situations the, the time of you entering the disability period is going to be earlier than it should be. Uh, compared to if you are an, an house unhealthy person, for example, if you smoke or you drink, uh, supposedly you should enter aging disability faster than others. But if you're living in a country that has better healthcare system, has a better welfare system for you, then you will have um, uh, you will enter the disability uh, later than like, for example, the same people, but even in the uh, last, uh, last uh, country with a uh, last welfare or healthcare system. Okay, so we'll go into the next slide. Sorry, next slide. <laughs> 
Okay, so a life course approach uh, is to increase the effectiveness of interventions throughout a people's life. And uh, if we look at the next slide, so it focuses on two two points, which is you have to have a healthy start. That means you uh, uh, you have to be taking good care when you're birth, at when you're born. But also they look at the critical points in life, such as uh, when you're growing, do you get enough nutrition or vitamins? And when you're aging, is the facilities age friendly enough to prevent you from being disabled? Okay, so uh, then the next slide, uh, I want to show you from um, the government perspective to this approach. So um, government can, okay, uh, next. Yeah, so a government can look at this from different, um, they have different ways to deal with this, such as they can improve health and well-being, uh, like better health care or better welfare for uh, the aged person, and they can promote social justice. And for example, they, they can um, set up uh, centers for uh, aged person to go to when uh, there's no one to take care of him or her in, at, in, uh, when his or her children go to work. And the next is to uh, contribute to sustainable development, inclusive growth and wealth, because um, everyone will age. And one of the important thing is to not to exclude anyone. So uh, even when we have to take care of older person now, but we have we have also we have also have to think about the future when the current young people old uh, old age and uh, going become older person. So this approach has to be sustainable to um, be good for everyone to for current young people, uh, current young people and the current aged people. Yes. So I'll hand it to Nishwa to the next one. Thank you, Alex. Um, just before I move towards the end of the webinar, uh, with a little bit of introduction on um, the manual of aging, I would like you guys to start asking any questions that you have on the YouTube video, um, in the YouTube comments, um, so we can answer them if you have any questions. So please start typing in. Um, and then I'll just move to the last um, part of the webinar, which is a little bit introduction to the manual of aging. Um, so the manual in aging um, so I started creating last year. And the idea of the manual of aging is to give um, not only a bit of basic knowledge as to what aging is, but also talk about the different aspects of aging. So if you can see that there are four parts of it, there are four parts of the manual um, in itself in the bigger picture. Um, sorry, uh, seven parts. I don't know why I wrote four parts. Um, but yeah, so basically we talk about aging um, as a public health issue and what are the statistics um, that Alex also talked to you about today. Um, the second thing that we talk about in the manual is different aspects of aging, um, which is the social aspects and the economic imperative that we have due to aging. Um, the rights of older people and what is ageism, which is discrimination against older people. So it's also a human rights issue. And lastly, we also talk about the education system, which is gerontology or geriatrics, which is the study of elder people um, um, as a speciality in medicine and how we need to promote with an aging population, with an increasing aging population of the earth. Um, how we need to start teaching medical students about geriatrics or gerontology the way we teach them about pediatrics, which is for kids. Um, and it is highly important um, to have these health specialists um, in the status quo, especially for the future. Um, we also talk about the different determinants of aging, such as mental health, such as um, tobacco use, such as NCDs, um, etc. As to how they, these are the determinants of aging and how they influence them. Um, then in the manual, we have a very interesting part, which is the activity part. Um, so we divide the activity part into three further parts. The first part is activity as to how you start. Um, so in the manual, you will have you will find a very comprehensive and a step by step, um, step by step explanation of how you can start any activity that you want, um, from goals and objectives and vision um, to how to start it, and then what methodologies you can use, the timelines. 
and then we have the second part on advocacy um, as to how you can advocate for aging. So it's it's a step by step procedure. Then we give example of activities on aging, which is also from my famous Taiwan, um, and from um, Ireland, um, MS, uh, AMSI Ireland. Um, they did a project on aging and how that went, and just a little bit about them. Um, then we move on to evaluation and how to end an activity. So here, not only we start with off with how you should do your activity and activity management. We also give good um, examples or good options as to what you can choose to do. So, for instance, an International Day of Elderly People, IDOP, is a day which is celebrated by the UN every year. Um, so how you can uh, celebrate that, that specific day, how you can have um, information stands or if, if you can have theme parties or how you can fundraise, or how you can advocate uh, with different stakeholders. Then we will move on to talking about... Um, um, how to end or evaluate your activity as to the evaluation procedure, as to quantitative, qualitative, how to say if you've made an impact and how to improve your activities, um, how to, and even in this, we give a uh, detailed explanation of how to do service. And at last, we talk about the external stakeholders um, in aging, including WHO, including the United Nations and organization, major organizations which deal with elderly people. Um, so this manual is... Um, we, we tried to take all this information that we thought that any medical students would know about aging um, and what, ac what activity part, how we can empower them to do any activity. We give you an example, we give multiple options, then we um, talk about how we can evaluate. And lastly, we talk about the global processes which are happening in aging and how the world is moving towards um, being concerned about aging and taking decisions towards um towards active aging and towards adopting the life course approach because there is a very current um, and I would say imminent need as Alex just explained um, for this. Um, so this is the end of our presentation. Um, and now we're gonna move on to any questions if we have any. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in. And I will let Okay. Okay, we are just going to... Okay, so I have a first question about when the manual will be released. This is on WhatsApp. Um, the manual are planned to be released by the 25th, if we do not have any delays, hopefully. Um, so yes, yeah, so we will try to have the manual out by the 25th. Um, mm -hmm. If you do not have any delays, hopefully. Um, Okay, um, so we have another question, which I'm gonna direct to um, and ask ahead. Um, so according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, when does the older age start? And this is a question by Andrea. Um, Alex, would you like to answer? Okay, hello. Uh, am I still on microphone? Yes. Okay, so um, I, I will try to answer, but uh, um, if I'm answered incorrectly, uh, I will suggest you also Google it to see if it's correct. Yeah. So, um, uh, in in the slides, I show that WHO defined um, like the age. If you call an aged person is uh, over sixty in developing country and sixty five in developed country, and so um, you your question is. Um, what older age starts so yeah. um they, they actually, yeah like kind of talk about this but they didn't get a definite like number of older age where older age start but i can tell you that is um it also depends on the region you're from um 
or like the situation of country you're from. So, uh, they I, I'm look looking at the the Beijing article and reads that in in eighty six seventy five, which is uh, more than one hundred fifty years from now, I think, in Britain, in the UK, uh, anyone who aged after fifty is considered uh, like old age, and for now. And you wouldn't call、uh, anyone over fifty in Britain to、um, as an old person. So you can、uh, see from this example that、um, the number of like aged person、uh, is not is is not、uh, set in like、um, so it's it changed from time to time and from region to region. Yes, I think I. I、uh, I hope I kind of answer your questions. I know it kind of sucks. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Alex.、Uh, we have another question.、Um, do we have any examples of activities from animals on aging?、Um, I think I can take this.、Um, yes, we do have examples from activities in aging.、Um, one is from FMS Taiwan itself,、um, and one is from AMSI.、Um, Ireland,、uh, Dean Arthur is their project's name.、Um, they will be a part of the manual, and secondly, we will be having two webinars after the manual is released.、Um, so we'll we'll have two webinars after the August meeting. So in that, we will try to invite those program coordinators and how they can tell you as to what they did. But it's a part of the、um, the manual as well, and、uh, we'll try to、um, get them for the next webinar as well. I hope that answers your question. Um, so I'm gonna wait for any more questions if we have any. Okay, so、um, I want to add on to、yes. like the active activity on Tai in Taiwan. So okay, so、uh, when we are waiting for questions to come in, so uh, uh, the Taiwan project is it's called the Aging Project.、Uh, it's so people will re remember it more easily, and it's a. Annual. It's not an annual project, but when we did it、uh, one year ago, it lasts for a year. So,、uh, the year-long activity includes、uh, workshops for medical students,、oh, for health stu healthcare students, but ma mainly med medical students.、Uh, workshop and、uh, visits to、uh, healthcare centers that is designed for.、Uh, Older people, because、uh, as I mentioned, because、um, Taiwan has more and more older people, and one of the major focus of our government is to is long term healthcare. So,、uh, more and more、uh, he long term healthcare center are set up in,、uh, especially in、uh, major cities in Taiwan, and、uh, we in the in that year we go to several. Uh, healthcare center to look at、uh, how they take care of them old and like how much、uh, a family has to pay for per person to、uh, stay there for a week, a month, or a year, and how they work with、uh, local hospitals when emergency happens, and for doctors to、uh, come here to check, give checkups to all the、uh, old people living there.、Uh, Including like physical checkup or mental checkup, yeah. So、uh, that's the case in Taiwan. Thank you very much, Alex.、Um, that's a very nice summary.、Um, okay, I think we do not have any questions as of now.、Um, now we're we're just going to conclude the webinar then.、Um, so just to look out for something, we will send out a bit of a summary of the webinar with.、Um, Once the manual and aging is released, please feel free to go over it. And if you ever have any questions,、um, there's Wiki and there's Alex um, Ari dot Scoff dot Asia Pacific at IFMS dot org,、um, or me and Scoff D、um, at IFMS dot org. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Or if you ever want to start an activity and need some guidance,、um, then please. Um, hit us up, and we'll try to help and assist you as much as we can.、Um, is there any ending words that you'd like to say, Wiki? No, no. Okay, Alex, do you want to say something?、Um, no. 
Okay. Um, so we're just going to end this webinar. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, and we're looking forward to your activities and your interests um, in aging. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.